And away we go. It's the DFS Early Bird right here on awesomeo.com, YouTube, across iTunes, and any place you listen to a podcast. Dan Strafford, Adam Share with you on this Tuesday morning covering for EMAC. Insert bad dad joke here. Um, <laughs> I love you, EMAC. I love you. You know that. Uh, but uh, Dan and Adam here, I am still in my bathroom, but uh, having some green screen fun for the, those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, uh, if you're watching, don't forget like button. Uh, don't forget leave uh, uh, subscribe. Uh, but I want you to leave a comment of your favorite book or magazine. Let's keep it clean to read while in the bathroom because obviously I'm recording from the bathroom. So let's have some fun here in, in the comments. But Adam, how the hell are you doing? Doing pretty good. Glad to be back on the East Coast for a week and a half. Uh, nice, nice to be home and you know maybe get some sleep. So doing pretty good. How was your How was your weekend? Uh, it was it was fine. I was telling uh, Dave the the eight year old became a nine year old, so I have uh, an almost a double digit kid, which is insane. Um, and we uh, had Irish step dance on Saturday night. And for those of you who don't know, Irish step dance is a pretty crazy discipline. Like when you get into the older ages, and my daughter enjoys it. But Saturday we were all at an Irish pub to kick off sort of St. Patrick's week, and that's where I was like, oh, I get it. This is fun. Like this this I can get behind. Because I can have a pint in hand. My daughter's having fun. They're all taken care of by other adults. We can go from there. But there aren't many of those nights when it comes to our step dancing. But um, you enjoyed the food in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Um, I, oh, I'm kind of mad at myself. Like the first <laughs> few days, I just had like buffalo wings every night because I didn't feel like actually going anywhere. Um, San Francisco traffic, really bad. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, a couple of, of our subscribers took me out to some cool spots on Thursday night, went and got some really good sushi on Friday night, which is was a, kind of a new experience for me because I've always kind of been a bitch when it came to sushi. And so, like, I, I was kind of scared to try stuff, but they, they forced me to do it here. I didn't really have a choice and decided it was really good, and now I'm addicted. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good time. Yeah, I mean, once you get the, well, I mean, dragon roll or, or spicy tuna or spicy salmon or whatever you're into – uh, and the wasabi and the soy sauce, you're, you're done. Like it's, it's, it becomes a very expensive habit very quickly to eat sushi on the regular. Um, I didn't eat it until I was 22, 23. Like I stayed away from it too. And yeah. then now I'm, I'm all in. I've been all in for a few years now. So yeah, I, I spent 50 bucks on delivery sushi for lunch today also. <laughs> <laughs> That's had amazing. plenty of food. Had plenty of food in the fridge, but right. I was like, yeah, I want to order some of this. You're you're living life. Do it. Um, we have a seven game NBA slate ahead of us. Uh, don't forget, Adam has your write up on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. That is the deep dive. If you want fifty percent off your first month, use the promo code Early Bird. Gets you in uh, at fifty percent off. And we are running a uh, new promo over on our Twitter handle. H- Twitter handle, I should say, awesome underscore com. And if you head on over there. It is uh, asking for uh, you to tag to friends and to tell us, meaning Osmo underscore com, uh, what sporting event in history can be anything uh, you would want to attend. So uh, head on over to Osmo underscore com. Do that. You get entered to win uh, a free month and your two friends that you tag would win those uh, that free month as well. So uh, that is what is uh, going on at Osmo? Don't forget, NBA Strategy Show is uh, Tuesday morning. Lofi and Ad- uh, not Adam. Adam's on with me. Uh, Lofi and Josh. Then you have uh, the deep dive uh, from Adam. Deeper dive with Adam and uh, Lofi. And then you have live before lock with uh, Spags or Josh and uh, Mister uh, Ed Fear, uh, who will bring you his uh, hottest of hot takes. So let's dive in here, uh, and we will. Uh, Quickly run through some injuries. Doncic has the the knee sprain or or knee injury uh, that will be uh, something to keep an eye on. A left knee strain. I should use the right uh, words here. Left knee strain that he suffered uh, against the Spurs. We'll see whether or not he suits up here. Uh, You have Pearl Anthony Towns questionable uh, with his knee as well. uh, It seems to be a genuine questionable tag here. Uh, four towns, not sort of this questionable, but probable, but uh, a genuine questionable. Zach Levine has a Q tag uh, as he was able to practice on Monday, but now uh, is doubtful uh, with uh, this uh, matchup here. So doubtful for Zach Levine against the Lakers. 
Drew Holiday, of course, is out. Jimmy Butler is out for rest on Tuesday. Uh, what else do we have? We have Cal Kuzma has a Q tag. Uh, he went through a full practice on Monday. Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball out for the Lakers. Andrew Wiggins is questionable. Rudy Gay was uh, sick on Sunday. Should play, I would guess, on Tuesday, but worth uh, monitoring that one. Uh, Bob Cove out, as ha- as he has been. I think that's the majority of what should influence this slate, but we'll, we'll go through it position by position. Uh, we'll start with point guard, where we have Dame Lillard as our most expensive, 9,200. Good matchup against the Clip- Clippers here. You know, if Doncic plays, again, I'm of the belief that if Doncic is playing, it means he's healthy enough to play his full allotment. I don't think the Dallas Mavericks are running Doncic out there at 50% or 75%. So at 8,800 makes a ton of sense against San Antonio. Ben Simmons at 86. Lou Will at 7,300. Rajon Rondo is at 6,800 for the Lakers. McCollum, White, Bledsoe, we move on from there. Top end here, Adam. Let's say 7K or above. Who are some of your favorite players? Well, I'm with you on Luca. If he suits up, I assume he's good to go. Um, there was a game that he, he, he had missed a couple of games and come back, and he sort of kind of had his minutes limited, but it wasn't like really. He just sat a couple of minutes at the end of the first half after like falling awkwardly, so I don't know if that was even – intentional or not um but i assume they're not gonna they have no reason to run him out there on some sort of minutes limit so if he's in i absolutely love him the price tag's down to 8800 on DraftKings for a i guess supposedly tough matchup against the spurs but it's more of just a slow paced matchup not an actual right you know good defense so um really like luca lillard in a pace up spot against the clippers is nice ben simmons um facing a cleveland team that just beat the raptors by like 25 points Pace down spot for Philly, but a very inefficient Cleveland defense without Jimmy Butler. You know, you should see a little bit more offensively from Simmons, but there's only also there's only so much he can do offensively. So, uh, you know, not getting too excited there, but still a reasonable price tag. Um, and then Lou Williams at 7,300 on the back to back. Don't don't love the back to back. Don't love the matchup against Portland, but you know he's the rare guy in that low seven thousand dollar price range that has legitimate 55, 60 fantasy point upside. So um, certainly some interest there. We go uh, sub 7K. Derek White is somebody I haven't believed in at all this season. I admit it. I just haven't had the ability to roster him at any given time. It's been a, a pretty roller coaster ride coming off last game, too. 29 minutes, just 15.75 DraftKings points. But the game before that, he had uh, 50.5 and, and had shot to eight of 11 from the field, but just one of one from three. Uh, really filled the stat sheet 18 points. He had six blocks, nine assists, six rebounds. You don't expect to see the blocks from him moving forward. Uh, But a decent matchup here against Dallas. You have Collison. You have Dennis Smith Jr. at 5,900. Beverly Clarkson against Philadelphia. Brogdon against uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. And then you get those Pelicans guards with Frank Jackson and Alfred Payton in the mix here. Uh, Payton's at 6,500. Sub 7K. Even let's go all the way through value. Who are some of the names that pop out to you as guys that either may be in your write-up or you think may be part of your player pool when all of a sudden uh, come Tuesday night? I'm with you on Derek White as far as I don't totally buy in. I, I've been, I buy in more now than I did earlier in the season, sure. but the thing with him is that um, in his big games, it's, it's more often than not influenced by those peripherals. You know, you mentioned the six blocks two games ago, and that's the kind of stuff that uh, – it, it seems like it happens you know, more than it really should, but he's – He's the you know third scoring option on this team, fourth scoring option if you count Rudy Gay. So it, it's tough to really count on him, um, especially because the minutes can can kind of fluctuate as well. Now that his price tags come up, I'd rather look to guys like Alfred Payton, who you can feel pretty confident are going to get around 34 minutes. Um, you know, like see uh, Eric Bledsoe in a nice matchup against New Orleans. Same price tag as Derek White. Um, could play a few less minutes, could play a couple more minutes. Like, you know, you're going to get 29 to 31 from Bledsoe. Um, it's at New Orleans. New Orleans has, for the most part, recently been hanging in against teams much better than them. So, you know, maybe we actually get a, a close game here. Um, so Bledsoe would be the one that I like the most out of that group. Um, Jeff Teague, if Wiggins is out, if Towns is out, then I think becomes, you know, a core play against Denver. Um, if those guys are both in, then he's more of a secondary option for me. But I would put him ahead of Bledsoe if they're both out. Any punts here? I, I, I have not seen anybody really come across as a really cheap option, but 
is a Gilgis Alexander at least worth being in your player pool on a night like tonight? I don't, I don't, I don't really feel strongly one way or the other on Gildas Alexander, just because I mean the minutes are trending into that upper twenty minute range, with, and and the price tag's nice, but um, there's still just a, a very wide range of outcomes for him. I would throw Kyle and Sexton in there in a pace up spot against Philadelphia, um, coming off of actually a big game last night against Toronto. Now a more favorable matchup, still only forty nine hundred dollars on DraftKings. Should get thirty two or thirty three minutes. Kevin Love is resting in this one as well, so there should be more usage to go around also. All right, uh, so let's take a look at shooting guard where we do have a number of out or doubtful players. DeRozan is your most expensive at 8400 on DK. Levine is doubtful at 78. Butler out at 74. You get Lou Will at 73. Middleton, McCullum, White, Barton we've talked about. Uh, we haven't talked about previously at 6300. You have uh, Bogdanovich here for Indiana at 6200. And then Wiggins, of course, with the Q tag at 61. Maybe opening it up a little bit more here, 6K and above. Is DeRozan on a slate like this that seems slightly devoid of top-end talent at least viable? Or or is this still a guy that uh, a little bit too much ebb and flow to him to be a top-end sort of play? I think he's always viable just because of the minutes that he plays and the fact that he's a close to 30% usage guy. The thing that kind of stands out to me, and I think it will end up being site-dependent because FanDuel generally is tighter with their pricing. But on DraftKings, CJ McCollum is almost $2,000 less expensive in that pace-up spot against the Clippers. I would expect Pat Beverly to be dealing with uh, Damian Lillard, which should open things up for McCollum. Um, I really think that McCollum's my favorite uh, shooting guard play, especially at that $6,600 price tag on DraftKings. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have mid-tier. We get uh, one of the Bogdanovich brothers, who are not, in fact, brothers. I just enjoy saying that. Uh, Beverly Clarkson, uh, Derek Rose is at 5,300. JJ Redick at 5,200 against Cleveland. He has not been good of late, but playing a ton of minutes still uh, at a, a lower price point. Again, Frank Jackson, Jalen Brunson, if Doncic is out, is 5K. And then you have guys like Damian Dotson, uh, Alonzo Trier, all of the Knicks also runs. Uh, anybody sub 6K that stands out from the shooting guard position? I like Redick here just because Cleveland is a bad team defensively. You have Jimmy Butler out, so there are more shots to go around. Um, you know, obviously Simmons can get some of those, but he's not taking anything from the, you know, from the three point line. Um, so it's going to fall on Harris and Redick and unfortunately to some extent Embiid to, you know, space the floor. So I think you should get some more field goal opportunities for Redick. We know the minutes are going to be there. It's a nice matchup. So I like him and I throw Tim Hardaway in there. Hasn't been great for Dallas, but he, he's never really been great from a fantasy standpoint consistently. But we know that the upside's there, and you're talking about about 30 minutes at $4,900 with multi-position eligibility on DraftKings. You know, I think it's going to be just pretty easy to get him in the lineups. All right, let's uh, continue on here to small forward. Reminder, Adam has uh, the deep dive on Tuesday. If you're not yet a member, use the promo code early bird. At the top end of small forward, we get Giannis. At 11.5, LeBron at 11.2. And then we drop quickly to Ben Simmons at 86, DeRozan, Tobias Harris, and we we roll on from there. Matchup for Giannis against New Orleans. Uh, AD has uh, vacated just a bit uh, in the fourth quarter, so you know there's some upside there with less rim protection. But is this a prime spot for Giannis, or do you feel like this is a day where you feel – at least at this moment, that a more balanced lineup may be in the cards and thus at 11-5, Giannis may be out of the plans. Yeah, I'm kind of torn there because – so I, I do really like the spot for Giannis. I like the price tag. You know, obviously the 33, 34-minute thing is, is a concern. It has been all season long. But he's the best per-minute fantasy producer in the league at you know, basically 1.75 DraftKings points per minute over the last couple of months. It's a New Orleans team that I don't think has an answer for him defensively. You know, Drew Holiday's injured. Davis, like you said, is only playing 20, 21 minutes a night. Um, I I just don't see the answer. So I I do really, really like Giannis here. But at the same time, we've talked about all the the guys that are out or questionable or doubtful. For the most part, if those guys sit, it's just opening up the mid-range, you know, for guys like Jeff Teague, for guys like – Chris Dunn, who we didn't mention, but if Levine's out, should get a usage bump there. Otto Porter. You know, a lot of these, these mid-range guys, 
um, Ben Simmons, JJ Redick. So, so I think unless we get some really actual good cheap value, it might be better off to just kind of live in that upper mid range. All right. Anybody that you want to point out from the low end here at small forward? I know that's not typically where we want to live, but uh, is it a Landry Schmidt sort of night? Uh, Mike Scott, like anybody worthwhile to keep in mind? Uh, at the bottom, I don't. I mean, if you if you want to get thirty minutes from Josh Hart, I guess, but he's playing injured. He said he thinks he needs knee surgery after the season, <laughs> so not really the kind of guy that I feel great about going to there. Um, I, I do think that in the so, I mean, you can get twenty seven minutes from thirty four hundred Darius Miller against a Milwaukee team that struggles to defend the three point line. You know, he's still scoring dependent, but it's a spot where he should actually be able to score. Um, in the mid range, though, I do like Otto Porter. You know, kind of briefly mentioned him but assuming Zach Levine sits I think you see not only the 34 to 36 minutes from Porter that you normally see but you should see um a little bit more of the role that we were seeing from him in Washington when he would play with that second unit where he was actually doing a bit more facilitating and and finding his own shots than he has to do when Levine is out there uh I I probably am making a joke that others have made and I I don't apologize for that because I'll steal material from anyone but um is Wayne Selden Jr. in fact a werewolf? Have you ever looked at his picture on DraftKings? I I, I have I, not, I've not seen it before. <laughs> I don't think I have. But there's something about it that seems very uh, uh, werewolf. Those eyes. There's something going on there. Um, do you make anything of the Lakers situation with the injuries they've had with Ingram and now Alonzo Ball? I know they're bringing up. Uh, I'm gonna forget the guy's name. It was a big story last year. It was like a 10-year G-leaguer that they brought Andre up. Ingram. Andre Ingram. Like anybody to keep in thought, like a, a Caldwell Pope, or is it all LeBron all the time now for the Lakers until the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, I expect it to just kind of diverge into a, a mess because you have LeBron on his fake minutes limit. You have Kuzma back now, which I think is big because it's it, it – makes it so that you don't have to play all of like Hart and KCP um, and, and Bullock. Like I think it's just going to turn into a hot hand situation, which is going to be really frustrating, especially with that group of guys. Cause none of them are very good for fantasy purposes anyway. Um, so I'll probably just stick to, you know, LeBron in games where I'm happy with 30 to 32 minutes or on slates where I'm happy with that. Um, Kuzma, I think should probably be the, you know, him or Rondo should be the best play nightly other than you know the cheap front court guys all right let's talk some power forward a lot of this will uh, carry over obviously with mpe on DraftKings. we have Giannis, lebron lamarcus aldridge eligible here at 8900 julius randall at 87 marketing uh did you mention kevin love is out is i had not seen that yeah, yeah i saw it um yep. he'll be rested tuesday day. yep yeah i see that okay uh come on dk do you remember when DraftKings didn't have designations? When you had to do research on your own? Um, I whatever. Um, somewhere Ben Pritchett is laughing, the natural slugger on Twitter, because he was always against the sites having content period, but also the designations. And I uh, argued against uh, him many times over. Anthony Davis is sixty eight hundred. A matchup here with Milwaukee. Last time out in twenty one minutes, fifteen points, eight rebounds, four assists, four blocks. Is that reasonable to think there's enough upside at 6,800 that Anthony Davis may be in play here, Adam? I just don't really see it. Same thing that we talked about before when he was, you know, at this price point, 21 or 22 minutes. Like if he, so for context, Giannis is the best per minute player in the NBA. He averages 1.75 points per minute. Let's say Davis goes out here and gets two fantasy points per minute and gets 44. Who cares? You know, right. it's, it's, it's good it very unlikely that you know 44 points is what wins you this slate so and that's you know the the two two points a minute more likely is that he gets his one and a half points per minute and he's you know completely useless so you know i, I would rather there, there's just more naturally more upside in guys like you know porter Millsap, gallinari harris marking you know any of these guys obviously that kind of span the price range but you know, any of these guys that, that can play 30 plus minutes, because if they go out there and have that monster night, they're just scoring a lot more points, obviously. Uh, Apparently uh, Russell Westbrook got into it with Utah jazz fans on Monday night. I'm going to look forward to listening to this video later on. Uh, He did not. He was on the bench. 
Um, and uh, it says, uh, uh, quoting from Eric Woodyard, who is a Utah Jazz digital sports reporter for Desert News. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, he's has the blue check mark on Twitter, though, so I can trust him, right? That's how this all works. Um, yep. Things get heated between Russell Westbrook and Utah Jazz fans again. Quote, I'll F you up, you and your wife. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Russ. Uh, I, well, hell, hell, listen, I don't have the context. Who knows what he was, was said to him? Uh, who knows what happened? Uh, but that quote on its own makes my night. Like, <laughs> just that on its Speaking own. Of good, speaking of good quotes, totally unrelated to Westbrook, did you see Steve Kerr's interview yeah. about Draymond? <laughs> I, was about, I was about to go there. I didn't see – I saw the lip reading. I haven't seen – what he said about it. Like, oh, I so you, seen... you, didn't, you didn't see Steve Kerr responding to that? No, 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 I haven't seen it yet, no. Okay, so you saw the lip reading where he clearly says something along the lines of, I'm, um, I'm, I'm fucking done. tired of drinking. Yeah. 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 So he was asked about it in an interview, and the question was something along the lines of, like, you know, you've seen the, the clip that went viral. Uh, what did you, you know, is, is that what you said or, or whatever? And Kerr just completely, like, deadpan is just like, no, that that's not at all what I said. Uh, these people leading, trying to read lips. I don't know how they came to that conclusion. What um, I said, word for word, was I beg to differ with Draymond's approach. <laughs> uh, Steve Kerr knows how to spin a yarn. I mean, he is very good at the media game. Him, and, like I want him and Popovich to interview one another. Like that's now, where I think we have gold is letting them sit in a room for two hours. It's got to be two hours. They're locked. It's like escape the room. I know if, you, uh, if anyone's yeah. listening has done that, but they just need to talk and just, just let them sort of interrogate slash interview slash uh, hate each other for two hours. <laughs> I, think it'd, I think it'd be amazing. Um, where else are we? What, what else do you have at Power Forward? Uh, you have uh, a guy like a Millsap at uh, 6,400. Taj Gibson is at 56. Obviously, if uh, Carl Anthony Towns is out, we assume he's high on many a list. Thad Young at 6,100 would seem like a guy that will go overlooked, but maybe for a good reason. What do you got at the rest of Power Forward? Uh, so, I mean, Mark and I, I know you kind of touched on, I think is, is in a great spot. Tobias Harris against Cleveland, I really like as well. And then going down the list, though, it, it kind of thins out. Um, Millsap's in a good enough spot against Minnesota, but I don't really love the price tag on him. Harrell against Portland, you know, it's a tough matchup, but should get 28 to 30 minutes. Obviously around a 1.2 fantasy point per minute guy. So um, he's viable. I think Chetty is probably my favorite guy in that like 5K range coming off of a big game last night, but now faces um, Philadelphia in a pace up spot. No Kevin Love. So I think that you should really see um, as much as you can offensively out of Chetty. Uh, Dwight Powell has center only eligibility on DK. Maxi Kleber last time out had a very solid game. Uh, every note you see on him is don't expect this moving forward. It, you know, this is Powell's uh, spot. But does Kleber have some sort of appeal here at 3,500? Not outside of, you know, if you're max entering tournaments or something like that. Um, it's just, yeah, it's it's a price tag that he clearly can pay off, but you know, it's not going to happen very often just because he doesn't get the opportunity. I, I would rather, as ugly as it is, just try and find, you know, $800 and get $4,300 Amino. Well, all right, there you have it. Uh, let's uh, close it out talking some centers here. Uh, obviously, Cat is questionable at 10-4. Uh, you have Embiid and Jokic both above 10K. Uh, Embiid at 10-2, Jokic against Minnesota at 10K flat. Aldridge, Randall, Nurkic is at 71. The, the obvious names that you, you all can scroll through. What's your take on Embiid, Jokic, and Towns here? If Towns is fully healthy, let's assume Towns is fully healthy. Let's just assume if he's playing, he's fully healthy. 10-4, 10-2, and 10-K flat. Is there one you prefer over the others? Jokic is the one that I prefer over the others, but I do think that on DraftKings where they're separated by $400, if ownership projections have yep. one of strongly favored, then I would be fine like making them the lowest owned out of the three, especially if the one that's heavily favored is not Jokic. 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, like Jokic is my favorite guy. He's the cheapest out of the three. He's in a good spot with or without Cat playing. So um, he, he's the one where I wouldn't really care a whole lot about ownership. But, you know, certainly you get the same kind of upside from Cat and from Embiid. And, and this is uh, probably not a very analytical question. I admit that. But who the hell is guarding Embiid? Jijic. For how many minutes? Like, I, it just seems until like a spot. He, until, he foul, until he fouls out. Until he fouls, exactly. <laughs> like, there's no one else there. Like, there, there's no one on that roster outside yeah. of Zizic. And even there, I, I, I question that of how long he remains in the contest. I, I think all three of them, again, assuming Towns is healthy. I'm just going to make that assumption on the podcast here. But Embiid seems to be in a prime spot. And Jokic clearly is. And this is where... Uh, somebody who maybe plays on a DraftKings or a FanDuel and relies on their information can get distracted. You see opponent rank and you see all these red numbers. Do the extra research, especially this time of year with all the injuries, with all the changes. Try not to just stick on the site and make choices that way. I hope the people listening to this podcast know that already, the people who subscribe to Osmo. But just a reminder, those numbers can be pretty skewed and even how they calculate them can be pretty off. Uh, what about the mid-tier at center, the likes of uh, uh, Powell, Mitchell Robinson, Brooke Lopez, Robin Lopez? Uh, what do you got in the mid-tier? Anybody that stands out? Yusuf Nurkic, 7,100 against the Clippers is an absolute joke. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know how that price tag comes about, but he should absolutely destroy it. Like, I think he's probably my favorite. He might be my favorite center even ahead of Jokic when you factor in price, but if not, it's close. Um, I don't really know how to get away from Nurkic there. Like you're talking about, you know, uh, Zubats for 20 minutes and then Montrezl Harrell, and you know that you're getting 29 or 30 out of Nurkic in what's been a very favorable matchup all season. So um, really, 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 really like that spot a lot. Um, after that, though, it, it thins out, which, again, just kind of reiterates how good that spot is. You know, Jakob uh, Pertl is is a fine value play with no Rudy Gay. Um, 4,600. Should get the start, I would assume, and play you know 26, 27 minutes against Dallas. You can obviously look to um, Ante Zizic at 3,700. Yeah, there's risk, but 3,700 is 3,700, and he he does produce on a per minute basis, so um, he's a clear value play here. Um, comes with risk, but you know certainly a, a strong option. Uh, I have to ask: Is there a fire alarm? In the background, that okay, yeah, better. I wasn't sure if you could hear that. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a new smoke detector that, uh, for some reason, is is beeping. Uh, I mean, well, usually the reason they beep is there's a, an issue, especially if, if it's a new one. But uh, I, I trust you know what you're doing. So, uh, I'm going to ask the question. My house, I, is on, my house is on fire, but I'm really dedicated to this podcast. Yeah, well, that's what we all know about you. Um, let's <laughs> talk about uh, ten care above Jokic and B Towns, James and Teddy Compo. Uh, who do you got as your building block? If just given these five, Jokic. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, you can find Adam on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. Of course, you find him writing up uh, this slate over on awesomeo.com uh, called The Deep Dive, and you need to be a subscriber to do just that. Uh, you can use the promo code EARLYBIRD, one word, uh, to get yourself 50% off your first month at awesomeo.com. Find me on, on Twitter at Dan Stravert if you so choose. Uh, find the site, awesomeo underscore com. Don't forget the contest that's going on over there. Your your one what's what's your answer? What's the uh, one sporting event in history, whatever it is? Go back to the Roman Coliseum, or talk about uh, some Washington Bullets, maybe back in the day. Uh, what's the one uh, moment, one sports uh, event in history that you would want to go to? The Jeffrey Mayer game, if I could sit next to him. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Being on the other side of that one. That feels sweeter right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> uh, Rick, what, what was the umpire's name? Rich? Uh, Richie Phillips. Richie Garcia. Richie Garcia. Richie Garcia. Garcia. There it is. Uh, I would say... I'd have to say the Jets Super Bowl with Namath because I don't think they're winning one anytime soon. So um, I think I have to go there. Um, Congrats on Jameson Crowder, though. I mean, what the hell are they doing? 
What he, like, I, I actually, I mean, he's, I like him. He's I like him too, but it's just these weird, they have these weird in-between signings that they do with a guy like Crowder where, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, they, they have a lot of money going to the defense, which I like. A couple of linebackers coming in. Uh, but the Jets are going to Jets no matter what. It, it's just, it's the way it works. I, I've resigned myself to be a Cleveland Browns fan starting next year, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> with that said. The, the Browns? Kings, I never thought those would be my teams going for yeah, exactly right. like, <laughs> I mean, the Kings are fun. Uh, let's uh, close it out there. We will uh, leave it there. Don't forget all the content over there on YouTube. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. I, I made the joke at the top about your favorite book to read uh, while uh, using the restroom because I'm in my bathroom. But uh, feel free to leave that as a comment or uh, head on over to Twitter. Tell us what uh, sporting event you would like uh, to have seen or would like to ha- uh, see in the future uh, and tag two of your friends to for them to answer as well. So uh, with that said, wish you the best of luck on this Tuesday slate. I'll be back with you on Wednesday morning. Emac and Lawfee are back with you Thursday morning. So Adam and I, Wednesday morning, uh, Dave and Emac on Thursday. With that said, best of luck on this slate. And we'll talk to you again right here on the DFS Early Bird presented by Osmo.com.